Hello! I'm Keely and I'm back! I uh, haven't vlogged in quite a while and I thought I would do a little vlog because we've got things happening in our household. The last time I did a, a YouTube video uh, we were we were talking about diet, we were doing the Daniel Fast, which was excellent, and we were house hunting, which was not so excellent. We'd been in our house seven months and our landlady decided she wanted to sell it. And we really were struggling to find somewhere uh, because larger family homes um, are a bit in short supply. Um, not that many of them. Sort of every house we went to had like 20 people wanting it. So, uh, so anyway, that was that. Um, excuse me. We have been moved into our new home for three months now. It's November, beginning of November, and we moved in the beginning of August. Um, and we are so blessed. It's it's a lovely home. It's smaller than the last house, um, and it's older than the last house, so it has a few quirks. Um, you know, things like doors that don't shut properly and um, taps that don't produce much water. <laughs> or taps that don't stop producing water. Um, you know, but the little things, just sort of working the, out the bugs. Um, but it's a really lovely home, and it's a very stable home. Our landlord is fantastic. He is actually somebody from our church and he's a lovely, lovely, godly man who's just such a blessing, such a blessing. Um, and basically we've been told we should be able to rent this place for the next seven years. Um, seven years he's got to renegotiate his mortgage but um, so I'm not sure what would happen then, but certainly for the next seven years he had no plans of selling and was quite happy for us to stay. So, um, and it's in the same area we were, so we didn't have to move areas, so it was nice. Um, and the lovely thing about it is it has a beautiful, huge garden um, with trees. I mean, at the end there's, of the garden there's quite a few trees and it's almost like a little mini woodland. Um, I think there's about six trees but it, it creates this sort of woodland environment. Uh, we planted lots of bulbs the other week in there so they all come out under the trees in the spring. Um, and behind the, the fence is horse paddocks. So it just feels like we're in the countryside, which is really nice. Um, so really blessed. Um, but we are not going to see the bulbs come up in the spring because we're not going to be here. Yes, we are moving yet again. <sighs> I think I need something stronger than water. Thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit. Um, <laughs> no, a bit of a cheap joke, that wasn't it? Um, anyway, yes, my hubby had a um, a phone call about three weeks ago. I think it was. Do you know what? The, the last few weeks have just blurred into this this blob of time and I, I really, I, I couldn't tell you actually how long it was. I think it's probably three weeks ago. I did think it was two weeks but then I thought that seems a bit too short. I think So I think maybe it's three weeks. Um, it could be two weeks. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think it must be three weeks because for the first week I'm, I sulked. Um, anyway. Yes, so I think about three weeks ago, he had a phone call. Uh, it was Monday morning, and he had a phone call offering him a new job, a transfer. Um, it wasn't just offering him a job, it was actually um, technically a promotion. And chance in a lifetime, really, for my husband. So, although I cried for a week, because I didn't want to go, um, I, I actually felt at peace about it. I, I just sulked um, for a week. 
but I felt at peace about it and I knew it was it was such an opportunity for my husband and and I couldn't say no and I mean if I'd felt from God that there was a really strong absolutely this was not the thing to do then I I probably would have I I would have most likely said something um, but I didn't and in fact I felt peace about it um, I was just sulking because um, I like green I like trees and grass and although this place has wildlife <laughs> wildlife's a bit different so where are we moving you're all saying where are you moving we're moving to one of the places last places on earth that i would have ex well no i wouldn't say the last place on earth it's pretty low down the list no wasn't even on the list wasn't even on my holiday list of places i'd want to go um so where are we moving we're moving to vegas baby my goodness yes we are moving to Las Vegas Las Vegas Nevada and it is Nevada from what I understand and not Nevada I keep wanting to say Nevada but I am un I have been taught on YouTube by someone it is Nevada <laughs> it's an ah, ah. so it's Nevada <laughs> well anybody that knows anything about Nevada well, no, it's a desert. Uh, Las Vegas is actually um, an oasis in the desert. And the reason it was originally built was to water the steam trains coming from LA. Um, and it was a watering hole because there was water there and the trains needed water. So they built a town there to serve the trains. Now, that was the original reason it was built. Um, it then grew because of sin and loose living um you know gambling and loose living basically um hence sin city um basically things were legal there that were legal nowhere else in america so um it's it's history is quite interesting um but for me well but now i mean it's not all about um the casinos, though there are a lot of casinos, but it's supposed to have more churches per so many people than anywhere else in America. But that does include the little marriage chapels that marry people um, just at the drop of a hat. Uh, so I guess it can, doesn't quite count, but even if you take those out, there's still a lot of churches there. So there's a lot of really godly people there. Um, and you know, um, you know, there's a lot of it, things that go on that are not just the, the casinos. Um, but my biggest, my, my biggest thing, I guess, is, is literally trees. I love trees and, I, and I'm not talking even um, evergreen trees. I'm talking about trees that drop their leaves in the winter and have beautiful green leaves in the summer and go brown and gold and crimson in the winter or in the autumn. You know, and I, I mean, even just moving from Sussex to um, North Lincolnshire, I really struggled with because North Lincolnshire is quite flat and there is, it has a lot of farms um, that grow crops, um, not just wheat and corn crops, but um, cabbages, vegetables, broccoli, you know, you, you drive down the road and you can just smell cabbages <laughs> uh, sometimes. Um, and I, I remember our house down south, we lived in a village that was surrounded by woodland. Um, it wasn't tons of woodland, but it was just a bit of woodland. And just those few minutes drive home, if I, I could have had the most stressful day. And just those few minutes just driving to um, our village just used to lift my spirit. I love woodland. I love trees. And grass and you know I just see green and I just just instantly start to relax so just when we've got our beautiful beautiful garden and our lovely home we're gonna move to a desert 
and you can have green in your in your home but you have to irrigate and you even have to bring in soil um, I had planned to have a this this year to do a, a vegetable plot and actually have it as part of our home educating um, it was going to be a formal part of it we were going to do a whole project around it for the season and and I was going to actually really bring it in as part of our learning um, and going to Las Vegas and it is possible to to grow vegetables in Las Vegas um, but you have to bring in soil and you have to irrigate and there are strict rules on how much water you can use you know I think you, you're supposed to be allowed I think it's four minutes so many times a day for so many days a week you know you, you and you can't you can't water your garden on Sundays so <laughs> Why Sundays? I'm not quite sure. Whether Sundays is the day the, the casinos and the hotels fill up their pools, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, Sundays you're not allowed to water your garden. Um, so, um, you know, so you're looking at rented accommodation. Most of the gardens are literally just gravel. They're all breeze blocked walls and then, and then gravel. And and that's often nothing to it. Sometimes they have a, a concrete bit. Some of them are concrete. The whole thing's concreted. Some of them just have a concrete bit, but most of them have gravel. Um, a few have a few trees or shrubs, but not many because it they take so much looking after and you've got to continually be looking after it. And obviously, um, if you have a tenant in your property that doesn't, then all your landscaping is going to go to waste very quickly because you've only got to not water your garden for a few days and, and everything will die. So, um, you know, and so the gardens are not really conducive to me setting up a vegetable patch and doing all the work that's involved to grow something there. Um, I mean, I was sort of looking and I, I can't imagine you could even use pots in there because obviously pots dry out quicker and, and it's just too hot. Um, I don't know, I've been looking at sort of gardening Las Vegas style on YouTube and um, I think that's a thing that until we've got our own home it's not likely to happen. But who knows, God is a miracle working God. Um, he got us this house. You know, I was looking through my list the other day at all the things I wanted and just almost everything on my list was in this house. Now there's things that weren't on my list that I wish I'd put on my list <laughs> that aren't here. But on the whole, there is everything in this house that I asked for, including my big fridge, my American style fridge, and my my big range cooker. I prayed for a range cooker and I got it, um, which well, I won't be taking with us. So, um, you know, I am praying for AstroTurf. Some of the gardens have AstroTurf, which I'm praying for because it might be fake, but at least it's green. And I can look at that and go, oh, that's okay, rather than stones. So, um, God is in control, you know, he gave us this home, even though it was only for a short time. Um, and yeah, so that is our big news. We're moving. We are going to be moving some point in January. Not sure whether it's going to be the 1st of January or the end of January. Um, I think um, yet. We haven't got the dates exactly yet. And obviously we've got to sort out visas. So, um, contracts were signed last, well, at the weekend, so we are now um, moving on to visa stage. So, um, there's a company that, that organise all the sorting out the visas and the moving. And so moving is, is going to be interesting. Now, the great news is, this company come and pack me up. So, I've not got to pack um, the bad news is that I haven't finished unpacking from when we moved in and um, I got a bit overwhelmed and then started to put some principles that I have written down on on how to help the overwhelmed mummy and which I was thinking of, of putting doing some YouTube videos on um, and so I started doing that and that was much helpful but I haven't got the storage space yet uh, I haven't got the bookshelves and the right storage to put everything, so there's still like, lots of books packed up um, and there's lots of things that need to sort out because 
I am not taking everything with us that we, we bought here. Um, when we were moving the last two times it was like, ah, oh, I have got to sort things out before we move. Um, well this time I really have to because I'm not going to fill up, we, we only have a certain amount of space for our stuff and I don't want to fill up, I don't want to find that I'm leaving something precious behind because I've got some junk in there. Um, so that is, um, you know, I've got to sort through things, which is very exciting because it actually makes the sorting process easier. Um, I have been sorting, um, I, I hoard, I really do hoard things and I hoard different things for different reasons. Um, books, I absolutely love books and I have this thing about owning books. Um, and that I think was the hardest thing for me to let go of. But there are certain books I've decided I am going to get rid of them because I won't need them. Um, one of them being my gardening books. We've got quite a few books on gardening allotments and things. Well, we do not need them in Las Vegas. Um, if we ever move back here, or if we move to another part of America at some point, I can buy the books again. We can use library books, whatever, you know. I do not need to keep those books. Um, They're just taking up space and I don't need them. So, those I am going to get rid of. I'm going to try and pare down my cookery books again. Now I got rid of a load the first move. I got rid of a load the, this last move. But I still have two bookshelves full of cookery books. And you know, the majority of cookery book, cook, you know, recipes I use are off the internet anyway. Um, so I'm really going to try and pare some of those down. A lot of them though are for special diets and things. So, um, But I'm going to try and pare those down a little bit. I'm going to get rid of some home ed books. Um, ones that I'm sort of like, I will never use those. So, um, but other than that, I, and I'm going to get rid of all the tatty toddler books and just keep the best ones of those. But other than that, I can't see me getting rid of many more books because I just love my books and I do have an emotional attachment to them. Um, the other thing I hoard, uh, I hoard clothes. Now, the reason I hoard clothes is a different reason. It's not an emotional attachment, it's a poverty mentality. You see, most of my clothes have been given to me. I have hardly bought anything. The only thing I ever buy are jeans. I buy a pair of jeans perhaps once a year. Um, I literally wear them till they've got holes in the knees and then finally I throw them out. Last time it was when I was pregnant and my jeans had got holes in them and I'd, I remember my jeans had got holes in them so I put them away and I had a new pair. They eventually wore out and they got worse but I'd still got the old pair so I bought the old pair out that had holes in. Um, so when I got pregnant last and the jeans had got holes in, I actually threw them away so that after my pregnancy I couldn't get them out again. It was like I would have to spend the money and buy myself a pair of jeans. Now when we're talking about jeans, we're not talking about Levi's or Wrangler or something. We are talking about Tesco's, you know, £12 pair of jeans <laughs> but you know I to spend 12 pounds on me it's just like I can't do that um, so literally clothing for me I just buy my underwear when I was absolutely desperate for them um, jeans when they the ones I've got are just too embarrassing to wear anymore and I buy the odd t-shirt you know probably a couple of tops t-shirts a year when I say t-shirts I mean the cheap supermarket t-shirts so, um, so, but I have, if you look at my clothes, I have tons and tons of clothes. Now, when I moved here, I got rid of a, a whole load of stuff, but I still have, I've got a whole wardrobe, you know, a normal sort of standard size wardrobe, crammed with clothes. And then I have, um, we, in our room, there's like a cupboard that's under the eaves. Um, it's sort of, it's, you can stand up in it, but it sort of slopes from head height. Well, in there, I've got a, a hanging wet, um, sort of stand, which has got three spikes that come out. It's got like each hanging rail is about sort of that long. 
and it's got three of them in different directions. Well, that was completely crammed on with clothes as well. And like I said, I hardly wear any of them um, the, for several reasons. Um, some are too small because I put on weight, um, though I'm losing weight, so that's good. Um, and there's some I can get in now and some it won't be long before I will be able to get into. Um, a lot of them I don't really like. They were given to me and they're just not me. I'm not really that comfortable of wearing them. Some of them I've had so many years that they're now really dated. Um, and some of them, and there's a few things in there that I've had for years that, you know, are really too young for me now. Uh, there's a couple of things that I can think of in there, just without even looking, just off the top of my head. And I think, you know, I'm 40 now, and I bought that 20 years ago, and I'm thinking, I wouldn't really feel comfortable in, in it now. I'd feel a bit like mutton dressed as lamb. So, you know, I, I'm sort of, you know, but I won't, I don't get rid of them. I just keep them and I lug them around with me. Um, and it really is a poverty mentality. So it's like, I am going to clear these out. And I'm so excited because yesterday I listened to, or I watched a YouTube video um, with this lady who was getting rid of clothes. I, I like to watch YouTube things to inspire me sometimes to get me motivated. And she said something on there that I thought, ah, that is the key that I need to help me to let go of this stuff. And what she said was, you look at a garment and say, if I was to buy this now, you know, would I buy this again now? Basically, that's it. Look at it, would I buy this again now? Now, most of my stuff I didn't buy in the first place. Um, but I thought that is the key for me. So I am going to go through my stuff. I was hoping to do it today and I ran out of time, which was really annoying. But I'm going to, I am absolutely determined. So I'm telling you to hold myself accountable. So I will do a, a vlog after we've done it so that you can see I've done it. But I'm going to look at each item of clothing. I'm going to get all out of my wardrobe. I'm going to look at each item and I'm going to say, would, if I had money to spend on clothes, and I wasn't worried about spending clothes on me. So if I had a certain amount of money for me to buy clothes, would I buy this? And if the answer is no, I am going to give it to the charity shop. Now, if I only end up with a small handful of clothes by the end of it, then so be it. All I'm doing is wearing um, jeans and t-shirts at the moment. So I might as well just go down to just a few clothes and actually wear them than have tons of stuff and not wear any because it's too crammed in there that I can't see anything that's worth wearing or I'm too flustered at the thought of it. So, really exciting. I've told you now so I have to do it. So that is my project this week. Um, I have got basically two months um, really to get this house to you know to do a major declutter and desort of everything so there are boxes from the move I need to unpack and I'll probably have to repack because like I said I haven't got enough space for all the books um, so I might just repack some of those books um, but then there's other boxes I've got stash and dash boxes which are boxes where um, I used to be a very overwhelmed mummy and uh, not keeping on top of things, which is my reason for, um, I, I don't know what to say, I, I'm, I, yeah, I'm planning to do a series of YouTube videos on help for the overwhelmed mummy. And it's some things that I've, principles I've put in my life which have really helped. But when I was overwhelmed, I used to just get these stash and dash boxes. You know, someone's come around, you just get everything that's on the worktop or that's laying around and you just put it all into this box. Close the box, hide it in the bottom of your wardrobe. And then sort out later, except I never get around to sorting it out because I was too overwhelmed. So then the next time I'd do the same again and and then the boxes would go on the top of the wardrobe and then the boxes would get stuck in the corner and stuck on here and until my room was bedroom was completely overrun with these stash and dash boxes. 
Um, so I'm excited about getting those sorted because I have been doing them. Um, but I'm excited because I will actually clear out more of what's in there. In fact, most of what's in there. Um, because I'm moving and I'm, it's, a lot of what's in there is completely obsolete now because we're moving. Um, I can't, unfortunately, I can't just take these boxes. And some of these boxes I've been, I had stuff in for years. Unfortunately, I can't just take them and dump them. Which is a real shame. Because I know there is actually some important documents in some of these things but the majority of them majority of the stuff will be dumped and so once I can start getting into those they should I should be able to get rid of them quite quickly so I'm really excited about that um, I am so looking forward to just offloading all this clutter and this junk that I've been carrying around for the last few years uh, and I have got to do it now in the next two months. So my first one is going to be clothes. So I will come back, um, hopefully, well, I will come back because I'm holding myself accountable to you here now. I'm going to come back and tell you about uh, my clothes declutter and how it went and uh, maybe even show you just how many clothes I've got left so I can prove to you that I've not cheated and that I have got rid of things. Okay, I'm gonna say au revoir. I'm gonna go because it's late, I need to get to bed and I want to upload this video. So thank you for listening. If you've got to the end of this video and you've listened to my news, um, thank you very much. <laughs> um, but I will talk to you soon and I'll tell you how it's going. Okay, bye for now.